anyway, so what we're going to do is make a trigger when a unit dies and this is basically the end like the the end wave condition so um, whenever new event unit and I don't have notes for this so I'm going to be doing it on the spot so it's good for you to see how I sort of navigate um, when I can't figure something out in the trigger editor comparison owner of dying dying unit is the trigger unit just so you know and owner of trigger unit is two so that's one of uh, it's one of the bad creep units dying. Um, what you want to do is, where is it? new action? So a unit dies. What, what we're actually going to do is set the player, modify player one minerals. Um, you'd want to actually change this to um, killing player. Um, just, and you have more players, that makes sense. Minerals add, add one. In this case, I'm just going to add one every time they get a kill. And uh, now let's see. But after this, we do need to also check that um, general that if if it's the last unit, we want to end the wave and then start the next wave soon after. So um, if new condition comparison, if um, the unit group number of units in unit group, the number of living units in function units owned in any units owned in the entire map owned by player 2 which is our computer player this is all good equals equals 0 so if if after this unit the last unit die if every time a unit dies this is going to be run and when the last unit dies it's going to pass this if condition here last unit for player 2 dies and then it's going to go into here. So we're in here. Now we want to set the uh, set the variable of time until the next wave to be, let's say, 10 seconds. And keep in mind, it's because the game mode's always on faster in StarCraft 2, it's actually going to be like seven seconds or something like that. So time until the next wave is two. Um, and let's do another action, which is trigger run we want to run uh, which spawn waves there we go uh, and ignore the conditions of course and something you might even want to do is this this is when the wave is over so you want to generally um, tower defenses give you money um, when you win a wave so modify killing player minerals let's add um, let's do an arithmetic actually let's let's do the wave, current wave number, so if you're on wave 5, you'll, this will be a 5 plus 2. So you'll get more each wave you're playing. Uh, more bonus money at the end of the round. Now we need a losing condition. you got to lose when the units reach that point. So new trigger, losing condition. Or you could name it something else like end game. Uh, new event, unit enters a region. And you want to check that the owner of this of this entering unit or triggering unit is player two. And then what you want to do? Um, let me just make the make sure the events okay. Oops, that's wrong. Um, I forgot to just set this. That was stupid of me. Unit enters um, our end region. There we go. That makes more sense. Conditions. Yep. And then we now we set our action. Our action is simply to end the game for in defeat for player one. Um, you what you should do though is change this to um, owner of triggering unit. Oops, I need to set for player. I guess you I guess it's triggering player in, in Warcraft three it used to be owner of triggering unit, but I guess it's triggering player now, hopefully. Um, yeah, that should be okay for now. Make another another um, global variable and call it player kills. Uh, and I don't know if there's a faster way to do this with the data editor or something, but I'm just doing it this way because it makes sense to me. Um, array for the number of players. Since we only have one player, we can just leave that. And the player kills initially as zero. 
Now what we change is when a unit dies, um, well actually let's copy our leaderboard code. Um, when a unit dies, we need to go to our leader and do some stuff for our leaderboard. So set um, variable. So now we have our leaderboard that we can reference again at set leaderboard item text at column two in row one, which is our kills for player one to equal uh, and you could of course if you had more players use use a variable here and loop through each player or something like that um, function and what we want to do is convert integer to text and we want to convert the um, the variable which is player kills and before we do this we also want to um, increment oops increment our player kills so player kills gets plus one and now we set that in the leaderboard so the leaderboard will get updated um, the other thing I'm going to be doing in the leaderboard is displaying the, t the current like uh, the current wave number and when it's in between waves it's going to be displaying how much time till the next uh, till the next wave so uh, we need to make another thing uh, another trigger I mean and call it uh, leaderboard update and you can make folders in here by the way um, and put things in a nice little folders but I'm just doing it quickly for now um, event timer just you know every second change this to every one second we're gonna update it because that'll look best um, and do a new element and the way I'm doing this is because I've already done it before but we need an if statement and we also need a new global variable called wave is waves waves are running and make it a boolean initially false which is good um, and let's go to leaderboard update so if if our uh, um, let's see if our variable waves are sorry I'm kinda slow because it's late and uh, and when you're working in the editor and trying to talk at the same time it's pretty difficult uh, waves are running so if waves are running is false I'd check this to make it true but if I don't do anything then it's false so if waves are running so if no waves are running then we will um, modify our time until wave modify variable time until wave to equal minus one and this is, this is good because you'll see in a second um, how it will update the leaderboard update the leaderboard uh, to show that the timer is running out until the wave starts so copy paste and we'll change this to leaderboard um, set leaderboard name I'm doing it in the name field. You could do it in the actual uh, field, which might make sense in the actual like area of players in the leaderboard. But I'm just doing it in the title of the leaderboard. Um, set this for variable leaderboard. Good. Two text. Okay, so the text is going to have to be string combine text, and the two texts we're going to combine are next wave in space at the end. And the second text is going to be a conversion of converting integer, and it's going to convert our time until wave. So it'll say next wave in three, next wave in two, next wave in one each time this runs. 